Hey folks, it's Ben. I've got kind of a clock repair video going on here. And the reason for that is that uh, I like to collect clocks, or at least crappy dollar store clocks. And they all have one thing in common, and I'll put it by the microphone here, and you can hear it. You can see it for sure. They tick. Now, normally for a clock, that's fine, but I find it quite annoying. Now, one clock, you can get away with it, but if you've got two or more clocks in a room, between them all ticking, it's really annoying. So I always thought that I'd have to get an older clock or something that was fancier, more expensive, but what you can do is actually buy on eBay um, these things right here. They're the clock mechanisms that probably 99% of all clocks use nowadays. Uh, and if you notice, there's two different sizes. This is a six millimeter and this is a 14. Uh, but most clocks that you'll run into use this six one here. But what the neat part is, is these are silent movement. They don't go tick. They have a smooth sweeping action of the, the second hand, which is fantastic because they don't make that awful ticking noise. So uh, this video is just how to convert your clock over for one of these tickers uh, over to a normal one. Uh, these run for about a dollar or two on eBay with free shipping from China. So expect to wait a month to get them. But once they're in, that's great. So uh, just so you know, wait a month and it's worth the wait. Take the battery out. Now, some clocks just have this snapped in. This is one of a, a fancier clock. Uh, I actually got this at a rummage sale. It actually has four screws on it. So we'll quickly take these off. This will release the front glass for us. And that'll give us access to the hands. Now each clock repair kit, and this one's actually glass, so that's kind of cool. And I knew it had a broken part. Switch it back over. So here are the hands of our clock. Each repair kit comes with a variety of toys. Uh, here are some additional different colored hands, but as you can see, this kit won't fit in this clock. And so far, every clock I've fixed, just reuse the same hands. And you can just, if you're very careful, just pull up straight, and they'll come out. So there's the second hand. There's the minute hand. And there's the hour hand. So there, we've got that taken care of. So now we have a blank clock face. Turn it over and you'll notice that this thing is just snapped in. It's not even really kind of no attachment screws or anything. So I'm going to just take a device, prop it out, and pull it straight out. And okay, so here's my clock mechanism. But this one goes tick, tick, tick. This one doesn't. Now, things to note when you're buying these. Here's an older one, but notice it's got a hook on the back. If your clock hooks off the mechanism, you'll need to get one with a hook on it. Uh, most of my clocks don't, however, so these are just plain units here. Um, and the other thing to note uh, is that they do come uh, with washers and a little nut that will screw on here. Now, this clock happens to snap in, but some clocks use that nut to squish it to the face. So, uh, something else to look out for. But I'm just going to snap this one back in. So, the little hooks are right back in it again. And so, now our hands are out here. Or at least our little mechanism is. I'm going to take the hour hand and I'm going to put it at noon because about the only thing you can mess up on this phase is where the hands are so that if it's at like three o'clock but it's in the middle between three and four that's not right so if you just set them all up for noon you'll have the hand position just right put noon and put the minute hand up facing noon and make sure you press them in there they're just kind of a friction fit This one's not quite right. So I'm going to tweak it with some pliers here. Hold on one sec. Okay, we're back. What I needed to do was that these holes are very thin sheet metal. Very, very thin. So sometimes you have to take pliers. And what I had to do is kind of squish it flat again. So let me try this one more time. Put it in at the noon hour. The hour hand fits pretty tight and just fits on the outer ring. The minute hand fits on the inner ring. And then for the second hand, I've always just kind of pushed in. And there's a little peg inside. So you just set it on the peg and push it in. And that's that. And then the other thing you need to do is make sure that you didn't accidentally, like I did here, bend the hands so that they touch each other. Obviously, to be a clock, they all need to be a little off the same plane. And you can also double check that by just taking the back spinner here used to adjust the time and giving it a quick spin and if oops see bump the uh, second hand there bend it out a little bit they're very thin sheet metal and we'll just make sure that doesn't touch the glass uh, when we put it back on there 
But now we can rotate it and it all works well. Let's adjust the hour just a smidgen there. There, so 2 o'clock shows that it's 2 o'clock. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now let's put the battery back in it. And you can see, now instead of the tick, tick, ticking, it's just a smooth movement of the second hand there. And if you notice, if I put it up to the microphone, no ticking. I have my screws that hold the glass on the front. I'll put them over here. There's one broken one because it's a used clock. Double check to make sure my hands are deep enough in the clock that they don't rub. Put the bezel back on, put the screws back on, and then I've taken this clock, which was a ticker, and now is a quiet cl um, running clock. If you have any questions on clock repair, uh, I will throw this away because it's worth about a dollar and I don't like the ticking noise of them. But uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments there. But that makes a broken clock, or I should say a loud clock, into a quiet one.